So I recently happened upon my old Game Boy that I haven't touched in years, and it got me thinking. What if all the characters in my old forgotten games were just still in there existing without me? And then I thought, I should make an art piece about that. And then I thought, I should make a living, breathing art piece about that. So here's how that went. I figured it'd be best to use the Game Boy itself to get the right shape, so I covered it in tin foil. I then chopped and conditioned some polymer clay and covered the foil with the clay making sure I emphasized where the screen and buttons would go later, and then also shaping the clay around the cartridge on the back. Then I threw the whole thing in the oven. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm dumb, but I'm not that dumb. What I actually did was carefully mark and cut the shell in half. Then I baked those two halves. I also cut out the screen while I was waiting for the oven to heat up, but I forgot to film that. And then the shell was nice and hard and ready to work with. The halves didn't quite fit together perfectly. I considered fixing it with more clay, but then I figured out a better use for the gaps that you'll see later on. Because here at Luxie Tin, we're all about making mistakes into blessings. So first I wanted to sand everything down, making sure I was wearing a decent mask so that I wouldn't inhale any of the clay particles. And then I removed the foil lining from inside and straightened up some edges with a blade. And, you know, accidentally broke the shell a little bit. But luckily I've recently become well acquainted with super glue because I keep dropping and breaking my glasses. So I put that back together and considered it part of the wear and tear that the Game Boy would have faced being alone in the woods. So I primed it with white spray primer and began painting the shell red, which isn't the color of my Game Boy, but it is the color of a Game Boy and I figured it would contrast better against the green. Yay, color theory? Part of what inspired me to make this is I've been thinking a lot about the loss of physical games. Like I can't remember the last time I bought a physical game. And on one hand, that's probably great for the environment. You know, we don't have to make another disc and plastic case. But on the other hand, it's kind of sad to think about the fact that we don't really own games anymore. I mean, there's been plenty of examples of games no longer being playable that you purchased just because the servers have shut down. I don't know, I don't really have any solutions, but it kind of sucks as someone who's into gaming history to know that video game collecting is gonna be very different in the future. So then I applied some dark red wash to add some extra grunginess to the sculpture. While I was dabbing that off, some of the original paint actually chipped off, and I considered filling that in with more paint, but then I realized I kind of liked it. So I ended up doing that on purpose in a couple other places. So I thought about cutting out the Game Boy Color logo and placing it on here, but anyone who's been around the gaming space long enough knows how Nintendo can be about their properties. So I didn't want to risk it. In fact, for the rest of this video, we're not going to refer to the sculpture as a Game Boy. How about instead we'll call it the Playboy? Uh, not that one. Let's go with Digital Guy. So for the buttons on our Digital Guy, I tried to mix air dry clay with black paint. It ends up working out, but lord, it was messy. Not bad for my first time using air dry clay, though. Just... Ignore the crappy letters on the buttons. If you've seen my mini Pokemon Spheres video, you already know I can't do miniature writing. So I cut all those out. Super glued them to the front. And applied a black wash to darken them up a bit. And then I cut out a piece of thin cardboard that they were throwing away at my factory job and painted it a foresty green color for the backdrop of the screen. And then it was time to make the screen. For that, I decided to go with UV resin to mimic a plasticky kind of substance. Make sure to wear a respirator mask if you decide to use this stuff, because it puts out a lot of fumes. Then I taped off and painted a square for the black outline of the screen. And I glued together the halves of our digital guy. And now it was time to get the terrarium part started. So I got my glass container out, which in hindsight, I should have either gotten a larger glass container or made the sculpture smaller. You'll kind of see why later. And then I added pebbles to make up the drainage layer. And cut out a piece of window screen to act as a barrier between the pebbles and everything else above it. And I added a dirt mixture for the substrate. But I forgot to add the charcoal layer, so I had to move some things around to add that. Look, if you want to actually learn how to make a terrarium, go over to Serpa Designs channel. That's kind of where I learned most of this from, honestly. And trust me, this is not a situation where the pupil out does the master. Then I sized up the cork bark I'd be using for the tree trunk, and began cutting that down to the right size and shape. And once I'd make sure everything fit mostly as I had planned, I went back to the sculpture to finish up the last details. Mainly I needed to sculpt and paint the Pikachu head and paw that would be coming out of the screen. 
The concept here is it's a Game Boy that was left in the woods by a kid when they were younger, and it's just kind of been sitting there over the years. And so the Pikachu that was stuck inside this Pokemon Red version has decided it is time to come out. Does it make sense? Probably not. Is it cool? Hopefully. So I used UV resin to make some waves and attach everything, and then covered everything in a matte varnish for some moisture proofing. With all that together, I added the digital guide of the terrarium. and was finally able to start adding some life to this with the plants. I knew I wanted this piece to mostly consist of a couple types of moss, so I wanted to get that in place first. I actually got these mosses from an alleyway outside of my house. I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, so I was really lucky that winter hadn't really hit us yet, or else I would've had to buy some. Then I attempted the worst idea I had had yet. See, I had decided that I wanted to fill those gaps that I talked about earlier with some dirt, so that the plants could use that. No, that's not the stupid part. The stupid part is that I decided to fill the sculpture while it was inside the terrarium. As you can see, it didn't even really work that well. And I covered all the moss that I had just planted in dirt. So I took everything out, got out all the extra dirt, and decided to fill the sculpture on the table instead. Which I didn't film because I was already annoyed with myself and I didn't want to deal with it, okay? And then I just placed everything back in like it was before. Just a little dirtier now. And then I finished putting the moss into place. I ended up gluing it to the sculpture just to get it started sticking there. Then I cut my next plane out of a previous terrarium I'd made and placed it into this one. It's called Oak Leaf Creeping Fig, or Ficus Pumula... Ficus Pumula Quercifoldica. I like this plant a lot because it looks like a little version of the ivy that you find out in the woods or on the sides of houses. And then I had to go to work in my factory job, so I stuck a piece of plastic on top to maintain the moisture inside of the terrarium. But what I didn't realize is that piece of plastic had what I believe to be grain mites on it, and those got into the terrarium. Now as far as I'm aware, they're totally harmless, but I didn't want to risk them spreading and taking over the entire terrarium at my room for that matter. And this is when I had a full on Breaking Bad Walter White versus the Fly type of moment. I squished the ones I could see, found the source, which was a container of fruit flies I had been breeding for my morning geckos. So I immediately tossed that out, threw everything that was on the same shelf as that into buckets of hot water. Then I grabbed a spray bottle, filled that with equal parts water and vinegar, and I sprayed the crap out of everything that had contact with it. And then by the time I was done with that, I realized that I didn't have time to work on the actual project before work. But at least that was dealt with for now. So I sprayed and wiped down the terrarium and headed to work. So the next day I knew I needed to make a lid that would last long term. So for that I cut out a piece of circular corkboard I found at Ikea. And then cut a piece of plastic out to use as the window for an overhead light. And all that was great, in theory. When I went to put it on I must have pressed down just a little too hard. And the glass cracked. So I had to glue that back together and just tell myself that it adds to that grungy look. But I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments if it does or doesn't. Anyway, I decided to bevel the edges a bit with a knife and a rotary tool to see if that would hopefully fit better. But you know, I took a little too much off. So to make sure all the gaps were filled, I decided to seal the whole thing with silicone. Not sure how easy it'll be to maintenance the thing in the future, but that's a problem for future Lucas. I knew from the beginning I wanted to use something to cover the top and the bottom to frame things in a little bit, but the ugliness to the silicone just made me certain that that's what I was gonna do. So I cut out two equal sized strips of EVA foam and glued one around the top and one around the bottom. Now I really wanted an outside opinion to make sure everything was good to go. So I figured I'd ask my assistant Audrey. But she was way too busy that night. So I asked my new friend Billy what she thought. She wasn't really impressed. Everyone's a critic, I tell ya. But I figured it was good enough, so I called it done. Now I'm gonna show you the finished project. But because it's a living piece of art, I figured I wouldn't just show you what it looked like upon completion. I figured I'd show you what it looked like once it had more time to grow in. So I'll throw that in at the end of the shots. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you don't mind, and good luck, have fun.